to fully understand the expressive power and the expressive differences between match and generic, we really need to look at the example where we introduce a new data type. So now what we're doing is we're going to introduce in our AST booleans, right? So we want to extend our, our code base. I want to add a new data type. And the Boolean, as you know, is also quotable. So what is the impact of that when I add to my two versions of my two files? Okay, so now I will first update uh, version one and then the version two. So what do we do? If we change, now I want to have Booleans and values. So I do basically this. Okay, so now I have numbers and values. Uh, expressions main, remains unchanged. And now, um, basically, I need to add a case for Booleans, right? So I do R colon bool B, and I return B. So now if I want to write, um, actually had a nice example here. So now I want to add Booleans. Okay, I see it worked. So if I just do, just copy paste this. If I quote all of this. As you know, in the slides, I make it more horizontal because we have more horizontal real estate. Okay, so if I run this, now I can see and true and false. And if I change this to false, this is true, you will see that these two will flip. Flipped, right? So there you go. Um, so if I wanted to add a new Boolean, it's, it's pretty simple, right? I have to go back to our quote and update it. Change the, add a new branch for Booleans. The code is very simple um, and everything works as expected because the algorithm is recursive. So if I have any Booleans inside of this data structure, it will be handled automatically, right? So what do we need to do for example two? Let's look at it. For example two, I want to add um, booleans, right? So to do that, I need to define a new struct um, that is now a boolean. So I'm going to do that here. Call it bool, and I'm going to do bool value, bool value, and I want to copy the example I had before. Okay, so if this works, okay, so let's see if example two works. Okay, seems to be working. Now if I copy paste this, and I change this to to false and this to I leave it at false. You will see that I have false, 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 false. Right, so everything works. If I change this to or, I see or false, false. Of course, we're not evaluating. We're just printing it. Fair enough. So we have uh, the implementation. We extended the code to to support booleans, right? What did we have to do? We simply created a, a new structure. We didn't touch anything else. We just defined the new branch directly with the structure. We didn't have to change the rest of the code. And this is actually a major difference. So let's let's look at the pros and cons in a bit in the next slide. So just to recap, for the match version, we had to go ahead and change the function R quote. Whereas with the version of um, generics, we simply had to create a new structure and everything magically worked. The quotable is now handling booleans as well. So the problem becomes if basically what you have is this notion of sealed or open uh, data structures, or in this case, functionality, right? What we want, what we have is we have this function, which we called quote. Uh, or this functionality called quotable. Um, we implement it in two ways, with directly with a function and doing a match. In that case, 
the code is hard coded, right? It's hard coded, which might be good or bad depending on what you want, right? So if you cannot, if you don't want to change your code and you want to know exactly what's happening, then a match is what you want, right? Your, the code is going to be very obvious. All the functionality is going to be there. But with generic, what you add is um, you add um, dynamically, you can dynamically add new things to, to, um, to a quotable without changing any code. So you don't have to change, uh, you don't have to have a centralized place that you need to change, right? You can just add a new structure, register that structure with the quotable functionality, right? With this methods functionality. And somehow this structure is going to be registered with the quote function, right? Because the quote function is a, a associated with this quotable um, interface or quotable generics. So, so really what you have is whether or not you want this, this notion of dynamic uh, extensibility to be allowed. Um, this is especially important if you are shipping code. So imagine you ship your code and you shipped already the quote function, right? So if someone wants to extend the quote function that you have in, in your favorite library, let's say you use JavaScript and it's in um, Node somewhere, it's in the package manager in the NPM, right? Um, now I am your client and I want to add Booleans, I can't, right? Because I would have to go to your code, I would have to change it and add a new branch to support my Booleans, right? My, my own data structure. So what that means is that when you use match, you're kind of hard coding or fixing your the range of possible values that can be operated by that given function. But with generics, you leave the door open. You allow an extension point. And this could be problematic for security, but it could also be beneficial because that's the intent. Right? So it's really up to the designer to decide whether they want to allow for that uh, open-endedness to exist or not. So what we see just in, in summary is that match allows you to centralize the whole code in a point. And this might be good, you know, if you want to understand that favors understandability of your code, which improves maintainability, right? With, with this dynamic dispatch or generic method, the problem that you have is now the code is split around across all structures. So it's very hard to get an, a global understanding an overview of what's going on in your code, you would have to under you have to know somehow what are all the codes that are all, all the structures that are implementing the method generics, right? The method quotable. So that could be a problem, and it's certainly an uh, understanding problem for whoever is studying the the code base. So already when you use this patch, your code becomes more complicated to understand. But match does not allow for extension points. It's really a sealed, hard-coded solution, whereas with Dispatch, you have this um, possibility of dynamism where any code can register and become a quotable function, which might be something you really want. So it, it could be a make-or-break feature. Um, in the next slide, so this is two key func uh, questions for you to think about. Uh, first one is, in which of the code in which of the two solutions, match versus dispatch, is the code centralized? So this is something I just said, try to answer that. And which of, of these two solutions allows for extension points? So that's something for you to try to answer by yourself. Uh, in the next slides, I'm not gonna cover um, in the video, but I invite you to follow along. I will explain how to implement uh, generic using record. So how can you do it from first principle? So I hope you enjoy, uh, enjoyed this lecture. And I hope you are also curious about how to implement generics. Hope you have a good one.